Okay, it's a full hour at my location, so I think we can start. Welcome to the functional group update uh, for the build team. Um, I don't really want to use Yob's terms, like everything is amazing, everything is awesome, but uh, I'm really excited to present some of our built OKRs, and um, I want to like guide you to what we are doing right now and what we will be doing with our, what, with our OKRs, and trust me, you're in a really good position to, to take a really great ride with us. So, let's get started. Um, our first uh, OKR for the quarter that just started is deliver PGHA in Omnibus and uh, Terraform to enable HA. So, basically, we want to finally get rid of the task that Ian has been working on for months and months, uh, where the target has been moved multiple times. And just as we were reaching out to, to finish everything, we started everything uh, from scratch. But um, I already announced some things that we did ship, uh, like uh, PG Bouncer, which landed in 9.2. Um, but I think crucial intersection for us was uh, when we realized that we had a lot of things overlapping with the production team. Uh, our database in, on gitlab.com um, is running, which is fine, but uh, we wanted to run, it, run with the package uh, and with the support from the package. Um, and while the production team was uh, thinking about how they can actually rebuild the current situation, uh, we realized, hey, why not just work together on this? And this sped us up unbelievably. Um, we got to test the uh, new uh, library that we are going to ship as part of our uh, PGHA solution. We got to test it on staging with Ian and Jason. They had first successful runs there. Um, they also tried some uh, automated failovers in there with the custom package, which is, again, uh, uh, quite brilliant. And to make, thing, to make sure that we have uh, um, a situation where we could ship this or test this in production, we shipped RepMGR, which is that library that we'll be shipping, um, to everyone as part of uh, PGHA. We shipped it in 9.3 without user-facing configuration, which meant that um, we can just place things over the, all over the file system if necessary and run our things manually without um, uh, introducing anything to the, to the end user. So that actually also allowed us to do um, some other manual tests on staging with the configuration uh, that is going to be shipped to the uh, users and I'm extremely excited to say that uh, we have a merge request that is currently work in progress but which will land in 9.4 and we will be able to in 9.4 say to our customers you have PGHA out of the package you'll have to do some manual failovers uh, if you need to do a failover, you'll have to do a manu manual one, not automatic just yet. But this allowed us to um, uh, at least also write the documentation on how you can actually do it. And we will be introducing that on gitlab.com. So amazing work by Ian and Jason, um, like big thumbs up. Um, because we kind of cheated when we were writing our uh, OKRs, we decided Let's, uh, because we are going to ship PGHA uh, and we are going to reach our OKR basically within a couple of uh, weeks from uh, defining it, um, let's move on and finish the rest and do the complete PGHA, uh, sorry, HA solution out of the package. Um, we are going to work on um, creating configuration, easier configuration for everyone, for, um, for the GitLab application itself, so you wouldn't have to conf uh, configure too many things. Uh, we'll try to configure as many things as possible for you. And we are, for that, we are going to address some of the technical debt issues that, uh, that we've been having. And we are going to make sure that the role-based configuration is, um, yeah, I wrote here, first-class citizens, I, I guess I was a bit inspired. 
but uh, is going to be uh, on par with the rest of our configuration. Um, as part of this work also, we decided we are not going to complicate things uh, a lot by introducing licensing for, for HA. Um, there is this huge discussion that you can actually read um, in the issue I linked there. Um, so we are instead of instead of trying to uh, ask our users to complicate their setup and introduce a license which can create a chicken and egg situation, um, we are going to focus on getting this into GitLab UI, which will give uh, the users uh, a place where they can actually check what kind of license they need and hopefully ultimately somewhere down the road, maybe even some monitoring to Pro uh, Prometheus. So that the uh, license can actually just be added in one place and that is in from the interface of uh, our admin UI. Um, further on, second build OKR, deliver service specific Docker images and Helm charts usable for gitlab.com. Um, when we were writing this uh, OKR, we noticed that production has a very similar one. Um, which stated something to the extent of use Helm charts on gitlab.com. Um, for anyone who ever peeked into our infrastructure, they would probably uh, be able to tell you how um, difficult the task is to go from a current situation to running Kubernetes on gitlab.com. So we decided, again, why not work together? So we are actually working together where we are starting with a container registry. The idea is very simple. We are going to try and improve the current situation where we are going to split all of the services um, onto separate nodes by using our omnibus package. So get into a state where we can uh, with certainty say the application is working correctly with the current situation that we have. We have staging um, that is actually work in progress when it comes to registry. And uh, yesterday or today, um, I'm not really sure which day it is anymore, uh, we actually have registry completely separate running on, um, on staging, which means that the GitLab application is running um, without registry on the same node, which is the current case for GitLab.com. Um, that also allows us to um, when we are confident and when we introduce this on gitlab.com, we can go back and write, rewrite this into uh, a separate chart, a Helm chart, so um, that we could then test in staging again and just switch out uh, the services um, when we are ready for production. That would also allow the build team to uh, take our time and make sure that we uh, have charts that are um, foolproof, that are production tested before we even release it to our users. Another OKR of ours is simplifying HTTPS configuration. Um, it says in Omnibus and Helm for Rails app, container registry and pages, consider Let's Encrypt. Um, in Helm, we are already using Let's Encrypt. The current uh, charts that we have are already using Let's Encrypt. Um, they have se several uh, limitations, um, and those limitations are basically everything that is stated in the issue I linked, uh, which says support in Omnibus GitLab is highly requested. Um, obviously, our community is uh, highly excited about this feature. Anyone who knows me knows that I'm not at all because I think Let's Encrypt uh, is not production ready. But during our installation call that uh, Sid did uh, two weeks ago, um, we got to a point where I saw that we have a very good opening to improve the situation for everyone um, using the package without actually getting to a point um, where we are going to have problems with Let's Encrypt. So uh, we are going to work on defining the pre-flight checklist, meaning we are going to make sure that uh, everything that we do need from the user is fully operational. And only if we have that um, uh, satisfied, 
we will go further with Let's Encrypt uh, certificate requests. So ultimately, we turn things around. Instead of saying, Ilea, let's build Let's Encrypt, we are going to build everything before that to make sure that Let's Encrypt is working in 99% of the cases, or as many cases as possible, obviously. Uh, the work on this hasn't started yet because we are lacking uh, resources at the moment, but um, you know, Q3 just started, so it's gonna be easy to do like this. Um, there are a couple of other things that I'm really excited about that we shipped. Um, I mentioned in our previous uh, functional group updates that uh, we did a lot of uh, improvements when it comes to checking the licenses that we ship. And we did more of them where we now have a whitelist, a blacklist of uh, software. We have whitelists and black blacklists of uh, licenses and our builds actually fail if we detect a license that we did not check. So if you put something, if you put a Ruby gem in GitLab CE or EE that has a license that is not authorized by, by us, the package build will fail. And then we are going to come and uh, hunt you down and find out why did you do that without checking the license and improve the process further, right? Obviously. Um, this also helped us when we were discussing things with, um, uh, with, uh, with, with our licensing lawyer because we were able to present everything that we already have and uh, um, which is usually not the case uh, for, for us. We usually have to build something before someone, um, uh, after someone asks us to deliver something to them. So I'm really excited about that. Um, we are also working on making sure that the installation process is great. Um, Joshua has been uh, collecting the issues and fixing a lot of them. So uh, great work uh, by Joshua there. And we decided to also make sure that our installation documentation inside of Omnibus GitLab is good. Uh, our group documentation grew um, with the things that we added, uh, like additional services and so on, but we did not update the um, general documentation to make sure that the user who for the first time encounters the repository can find the um, things easier. And two other things that I listed here, uh, QA is part of the triggered package build and new release process. Um, I'm going to go into a bit of detail uh, for each of them. Um, previously, we announced that you can build your own package and your Docker image. Um, we now are working on expanding this where you will be able to trigger a package and image build and have that same build run a few full QA test, which I think is going to be a game changer for our development. Um, the improvements that we are going to introduce after this gets merged is we are going to work towards infrastructure that will allow us to get the build times of the packages, Docker images and the QA down right now. The, this whole pipeline takes two hours, which is not that bad, but it's definitely not good. So if you have uh, a one hour run of your um, feature tests, um, one hour more for everything else, I, I wouldn't say it's too bad, but uh, we can definitely improve it. And when we get to a point where we can reliably say the, this pipeline is going to take the same amount of time as the uh, test pipelines that we have for our GitLab CE and EE, we are no longer going to offer you that luxury of not testing your package. We are going to enable this by default for everyone, and we are going to leverage our multi-project pipelines to get you that feedback right there in your merge request. So if the QA fails somewhere because of a change that wasn't uh, properly introduced into QA or because you broke something, your merge request is going to fail. Um, amazing work by Jegos, Remy, and uh, Balu there. Um, I'm, I, cannot, I cannot wait to, to, to see this in, in reality. This, this is just going to be amazing. 
And uh, to finish off on an even higher high, um, with 9.4, we are introducing a completely different package release process. Um, our release process was built long time ago before we had the, the procedures in place. And uh, I think it got started um, when we were starting the screen sessions to build every single package. Um, we outgrew that. It's obvious uh, uh, we have community, we have customers who are um, asking us, hey, I see a package out and it's already installed on my server. So I don't see a blog post. Is the release out? What hap what's happening? And at that moment, we are still trying to deploy this on gitlab.com. Um, that is definitely not good. So what we ended up doing is we separated build from upload to uh, a temporary location and then introduce a manual action, at least for now, a manual action for our release managers, which will not have to panic anymore. Uh, when, when the packages are built, they will be able to deploy on staging, deploy on Canary, deploy on production. Um, from a private repository that is not going to be world uh, accessible yet. And once they are confident and once we are confident that we have a package that is working correctly, that we don't have any major regressions, uh, release manager is going to use our CI and it, they are going to press that play button for each and every package and that package is going to be released to public. Not only package, this is going to be the same for uh, Docker image and for our Raspberry Pi builds. So I think this is going to be a game changer for us, for our release process, and uh, one of the, the first big improvements that are going to happen for the release. Um, I think that's about it. I managed to compose this at 17 minutes, but my practice runs were 15. Uh, we'll be better next time. So let me take a look if there are any questions. Awesome, yeah, everything is awesome. Um, I don't think I had a functional group update where I uh, didn't present any low lights. We obviously have them, but I'm not going to present them because this is just so exciting. Awesome, um, if you don't have any questions, um, have a great rest of the day and talk to you at the team meeting. Bye.